Genesis 6. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. And he took them wives of all they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Greetings, friends. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Sean, your host. The website can be found at www.scriptureandprophecy.com. That's where you go to find the archives, links to the books. That's where you go to support this mission of truth. Thank you for joining me this morning. It's going to be another strange episode as we talk about some strange things, but nothing new. Things that we've talked about for years and years and years. We just uh, You just heard me read from the book of Genesis chapter 6, dealing with the time that the sons of God came down from heaven and had relations with women and bore them giants. The word there in the Hebrew is the word Nephilim. That's where we get the word Nephilim or that's where that concept comes from. It's not just a made up concept. The B'nai Elohim, the sons of God came down and they bear these children with women that were giants. The scriptures are very clear. They were giants in the earth in those days. We see them all. We see giants talked about all through Samuel and Chronicles. We see in the book of Numbers how the Israelites were afraid to go into the promised land because of the giants. And they felt like they looked like grasshoppers in their sights. We've, we've been over this a thousand times on this broadcast. Go to the archives on the YouTube channel and just search for giants. You'll find or Enoch and you will see endless videos about this topic. So if you're new to this idea, there's really not a question I haven't answered in regards to this stuff. I want to take just one minute here before we get into our news articles. Uh, this, this word, sons of God, it is dealing with angels. And just to make that point a little more clear, I'm going to show you another passage where it's used. If we go to the book of Job, we go to the very first chapter. And uh, let's see here, we go down to verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came along with them. So there's one example of that, and then of course you know the story, he has this dialogue with Satan about Job. But the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. All right. We're going to today, because for really, since I've been doing this podcast, which is about seven years, give or take, I've been warning about genetic modification, right? Genetic modification is coming. The day is coming when they're going to genetically modify human beings. Um... And people often wonder, where do I get that concept? Where do I get this concept? And it's because there's nothing new under the sun. It'll be like the days of Noah. And in the days of Noah, that's what they were doing. They were splicing animals together. And you had the giants, you had the Nephilim, all this. 
And so the question you might ask is, where do you get that concept? Because the Bible doesn't specifically say that, say that, right? Well, I get it from the Dead Sea Scrolls, and, and I'm going to show you all of that uh, today. So we're going to be looking at this account from the Book of Enoch, from the Book of Jubilees. We're also going to look at it from the Book of Jasher. And if I have time, the Ancient Testament, Testaments of the Patriarchs, all these books, with the exception of Jasher, is from the Dead Sea Scrolls, which was before the time of Christ. So it's not some new idea to somebody just drummed up recently. Uh, the book of Jasher, however, is not from the Dead Sea Scrolls, but it's a book that's referred to in the Bible twice as recommended reading material. Isn't it? It'll, it'll say this. Isn't it written in the book of Jasher? So that's what we're going to be looking at today. But first, we got to get to these news articles. And before I get to the weird human crimeria weirdo stuff, let me just make one more prediction. That is that this is the year, it's every 16 or 17 years, depending on what article you read, but everybody agrees that this is the year where, it, I don't know if it's around, like this around the, the whole globe or if it's just in the United States, but the cicadas, which come out, it, for me here in Indiana, they come out in the fall, around August. They come out and you hear them in the trees and they're harmless little bugs. Um, and they're usually black with some green on them. And I mean, they're a decent size. Uh, I used, we used to call them locusts, but really they're cicadas. Um, and when I was a little kid, I was always fascinated with cicadas. I would watch them come out of that crazy shell, you know, cause they're, they're in this one form as they climb up the tree and then they kind of burst out of this shell and they fly. If, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go, go look them up. But every 16 or 17 years, they go through this weird cycle where there's just 10 to 20 times more than normal. And they're just like a plague. And I remember the last time it happened, I was working at a retail store and we were right across the street from this arboretum. And the windows and the sidewalks and the doors of the retail store I was working in were just caked with these things. And, I mean, there was just dead ones all over the place. The whole parking lot was... I mean, you, you literally needed a broom to deal with them. My prediction is that this year is going to be the worst we've ever seen. I'm making this prediction based on a gut feeling and the fact that I believe that we're entering into this strange time um, and I, I just expect that it'll be plague-like, okay? Uh, now, I don't. they might hatch at different times around the country. Here in Indiana, they, always, they typically hatch in fall, like August, However, when they're on this weird cycle, maybe it's different because this article we're about, about to read says, like, May. Anyway, let me read this article to you, and then we're going to get to the weird Crimea stuff and then get to our text. This article says, New Jersey to see billions of cicadas followed by venomous snakes. Not only does the New Jersey have billions of cicadas to be concerned about this spring, but also an infestation of snakes. And it hits just keep coming. According to the recent report, as these cicadas emerge, so come the venomous copperhead snakes as well. These snakes are typically reclusive, but the massive number of cicadas is expected to bring them out in unusual numbers. The report states that the snakes will be looking for these cicadas as a source of food, and that the 17-year cycle emergence of these insects will provide a buffet for predators, including a venomous copperhead, which lives in New Jersey. Billions of cicadas are expected to emerge from their 17-year hibernation in the month of May throughout 15 states across the United States, according to the report. Cicadas are part of a brood X, which is the largest and most widely distributed brood of insects, and with them come snakes that will be hunting them. The 17-year cycle takes place by the cicadas mating and the females who don't make any noise, lay eggs, and then will die. Once the cicadas hatch, the young cicadas will burrow into the ground, and this cycle starts all over again. So it's every 17 years, 16 years. And if you're familiar with them, you know that they sing in the trees. and They're, they're really just an interesting insect. One thing I'll also note that I noticed last year when this cycle happens. Again, as a kid, I was obsessed with cicadas. I was always capturing them and putting them in jars and stuff. I don't know why. I just thought they were the coolest bug. I liked the noises that they made. They have like a rattle inside of them. And 
They're always black with green, like green eyes and some green speckles on them. But I remember from that cycle that year, when they were all over the place, they were red. They were black with red. They weren't their normal color either. So be on the lookout for that. Again, it's, this article saying there's 15 states and it's in May. It's always in August, but maybe when they go through this cycle, it's in May. Be on the lookout for this. Let's make this prediction in advance. It's going to be worse than normal. It's, it's already bad enough with this cycle. I predict it'll be worse than normal. All right, now that I've got that out, let's deal with these three headlines. And then we're going to look at where did I, where do I get this information where I'm making predictions that there's going to be crimerias and all this weird genetic splicing taking place. First of all, let's acknowledge the fact that it's happening as predicted. This article here says, Days of Noah, hybrid monkey-human embryo created in lab for the first time some more in Pandora's box has been opened. First of all, this isn't the first time. They've been doing this stuff for a long time. Okay, This is the first time it's being made public. For the first time in history, researchers now have embryos that are reportedly a hybrid of human and monkey cells and announced has sounded the alarm for those who raise ethical questions for such a move. According to the report, a professor named Juan Carlos Izpuza Belante in gene expression laboratories in the gene expression laboratories at the Salk Institute of Biology Studies, this is in California, claims that research could one day cut waiting list of organ transplants. So anyway, they're splicing human DNA with monkeys. So they're creating a creature that God did not create. And saying, well, it's for the purpose of organs. Of course, you know, there's always some good reason why we're gonna do it. This article here says science are mixing human body parts with robots and monkeys. So here's the cyborg part of it. This article says this, It's been a month for sci-fi primates. On April 8th, Elon Musk's startup Neuralink announced that they created a cyborg monkey who can play mind pong using a brain chip. The following week, scientists at the Salk Institute of California relieved that they successfully grew human maske embryos in test tubes and these hybrid babies were aborted at 20 days. I want you to think about the implication of this, my friends. They're planting chips in monkeys' brains that they can control things with thought. You can imagine where that's going. They made a baby, a hybrid baby, that's monkey and human, that they aborted it after 20 days. This is getting bizarre, weirdo land. This is so dangerous. And then, of course, this article here, U.S. scientists are playing God by creating bizarre human-animal crimerias during extremely strange scientific experiments. And you can find that on the themostimportantnews.com, and it kind of addresses everything that we've just mentioned. But let me just read the first paragraph from it. Here's what he says. He says, Many like to point out the evil that is going on in our streets, our bedrooms, and the halls and power of Washington. But often some of the most horrific crimes that are happening in our society are taking place in our scientific laboratories. That's a perfect and true statement right there. For years, the U.S. government has funded the use of fresh aborted babies in experiments that created bizarre human-mouse hybrids for scientific research purposes. And now we are learning that scientists have created human-monkey hybrid embryos for the first time ever. According to NPR, these embryos were created in order to find new ways to produce organs for people who need transplants. So that's the cover story. And you can go find that article again on the themostimportantnews.com and take a look at it. Weirdo times we're living in. And by the way, they keep pushing the alien, alien agenda. I'll just mention that in passing real quick. It is on high alert. alert push. A new article here says commercial airline pilots, pilots keep reporting UFO, UFOs over Canada. And all the years I've been watching this stuff, this is the highest I've ever seen this agenda pushed. Okay, So be on the watch. There's going to be some type of disclosure and deception, but I'm telling you that all of this, the UFOs, the aliens, the mixing of animals and all of that, it's all related to the same 
issue. It's all related to the same concept that we're dealing with in Genesis chapter 6. Okay? It's strange that I'm talking about this stuff not in a science fiction made-up way, like in a hypotheticals, but that this is real stuff that's actually happening in 2021. The things that have transpired over this last year have shocked even myself. It's, it's beyond weird. It's beyond wild. And it's disturbing. Disturbing, disturbing, disturbing. And I don't know how long God will let it go on. I mean, when this developed during Noah's days, I mean, God let Noah spend a hundred years preaching and building a boat. So, who knows? I don't know. I do think that we're in the end of time. But it's, it's hard to say where this goes. But our job is to trust in God and to work towards our mission, which is to share the good news of the kingdom, to share the good news of Jesus Christ, who was crucified for our sins and rose from the dead. You know, these are, these are our missions during this time. Okay. And we can't forget that. Let me read to you what I wanted to share with you this morning, okay? So we're going to look at three or four different sources from outside the Bible. We already read the Genesis chapter 6 account. Let me read you Enoch chapter 6. Just, and again, I'm just going to give you a few few paragraphs from each one to just kind of drive the point home. Because the, one of the questions we might ask ourselves, as we're looking at Genesis chapter 6, you know, God destroyed humanity, but why did he destroy all the animals too? Like, why was that part of Like, did the animals sin? Or was there sin in regards to the animals? And so God had to just destroy the whole world. It's a question worth asking, right? Enoch chapter 6 verse 1. And it came to pass, when the children of men had multiplied in those days, were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters, and the angels of the children of heaven saw and lusted after them and said to one another, Come, let us choose us wives from among the children of men and beget us children. And Semjaza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear you will not indeed agree to do this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty of a great sin. So we have these angels who, for whatever reason, have been overcome with lust towards these beautiful women. And now they're trying to make a plan to bear their own children, bear their own creation with these women. They know there's going to be a price to pay because some Jaza, their leader, is like, I've, I'm afraid that you guys are not going to follow through with this, and then I'm, I alone am going to have to bear the punishment. Verse 4, And they all answered him and said, Let us swear an oath and bind ourselves by mutual impreca impreca imprecations not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. Then swear they all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And they were all two hundred who descended in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. And they called it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And then it goes on to give all their names. I'm going to skip this part. Verse, or chapter 7, verse 1, And all the others together with them took unto themselves wives, and each chose from himself one. And they began to go in unto them, and defiled themselves with them. And they taught them charms and enchantments, and cutting of roots, and made them acquainted with plants. So basically, they had sex with the women. But uh, along with that, they also taught the human beings things like herbalism. And they became pregnant, and they bared great giants, whose height was three thousand ells, who consumed all the acquisitions of men. And when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. So the, the human beings were unable to sustain the appetites of these giants, and so they started to eat men. And they began, listen to this, and they began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish 
and to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. And then the earth laid acquisition against the lawless ones. So now our next question is, what does it mean that they were sinning against the animals? Let's go to the book of Jasher. One thing that we're going to learn about from the book of Jasher about this story is that the women didn't necessarily volunteer for this. They were taken by force, according to these, to these verses. Let's have a look. Uh, let's see, what verse am I looking for to get started here? I think we're chapter 4. Let's start with verse 15. Or, I'm sorry, 16. And all the sons of men departed from the ways of the Lord in those days, as they multiplied upon the face of the earth with the sons of daughters, and they taught one another their evil practices, and they continued sinning against the Lord. And every man made unto himself a god, and they robbed and plundered every man his neighbor as well as his relatives, and they corrupted the earth, and the earth was filled with violence. And their judges and rulers which, by the way, I believe is speaking about these fallen angels, went to the daughters of men and took their wives by force from their husbands according to their choice. So these judges went and said, I, I want that woman. We want, the, you know, and they, they picked the women, whether they were married or not, and took them by force. took them by force from their husbands according to their choice, and the sons of men in those days took from the cattle of the earth, the beast of the field, and the fowls of the air, and listen to this, and taught the mixture of animals one species with the other. By the way, this is an ancient book, friends. This is not something that was conjured up in some dude's basement in the 20th century. Okay? This is old. Taught the mixture of animals with one species with another in order therewith to provoke the Lord. And God saw the whole earth and it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted its ways upon the earth, all men and all animals. And the Lord said, I will blot out man from the created who I've created from the face of the earth, yea, from man to birds of the air together with cattle and beast that are in the field for I repent that I have made them. And all the men who walked in the ways of the Lord died in those days before the Lord brought the evil upon the man which had been declared. For this was from the Lord that they should not see the evil which the Lord spake of concerning the sons of men. And Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord chose him and his children to raise up from upon the face of the whole earth. Something interesting to note is you say, well, why did God wait so long to do anything? Well, it tells you right here, he was waiting for the righteous who were left, which were few, for them to pass on before he brought the evil upon the earth. Why? Because God's wrath is not for his anointed, his elect, his chosen, his children. When God pours out wrath, and we're talking world blanketing wrath, civilization ending wrath, his people are not appointed to that. So he waited them out until they had all passed. And then he brought forth the judgment. You see, as you're moving towards judgment like what we see here, the flood as an example, or maybe even in the very end of ends, is it possible that there's not many faithful left at that point? I mean, Jesus even says, will there be any faith when I come back? Will I find any faith in the earth? Let's go look at the Jubilees account. Chapter 5. But the Jasher account really uh, sets home the whole splicing of animals. I mean, it clearly, clearly says it. That's where I got that idea. That's why I was saying seven years ago, they're going to do this. It was because they were talking about it and because scriptures and ancient manuscripts predict it and it's happened in the past and there's nothing new under the sun my friends don't let the don't let the science and the 
false history and all that convince you that these people before the times of the flood were just like living in caves and only knew how to use rocks and, and no, there was unbelievable levels of intelligence, maybe even higher than what we have right now. Continuing on, let's go look at Jubilee chapter five. And it came to pass when the children of men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the angels of God saw them. You see, Jubilees makes it very clear who we're dealing with here. The angels of God. Again, Jubilees, many manuscripts found with the Dead Sea Scrolls. And the angels of God saw them on a certain year of this Jubilee, that they were beautiful to look upon. And he took themselves wise of all whom they chose, and they bare unto them sons, and they were giants. And lawlessness increased on the earth, and the flesh corrupted its way. Alike men and cattle and beasts and birds and everything that walks on the earth, and all of them corrupted their ways and their orders. You see, Jubilees is getting at the same thing. All flesh was corrupt, and it wasn't, they weren't in their normal order like God had created. Why? Because they were splicing the creatures together somehow and creating their own weird stuff. You see, the whole point of these, these angels, what was their goal? Their goal was to bear their own creation. They had the same problem that Satan has. They want to be God. So they came down. They forcefully took wives. They bore giants to these wives that were unsustainable. And they started splicing and creating their own animals, which had to be destroyed, right? All of them corrupted their ways and their orders, and they began to devour each other. So this confirms uh, what Enoch says, that they, they, they're cannibalized. And lawlessness increased on the earth, and every imagination of the thoughts of all men was thus evil continually. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, and all flesh had corrupted its orders. And all that were upon the earth had wrought all manner of evil before his eyes. And he said that he would destroy man and all flesh upon the face of the earth, which he had created. But Noah found grace before the eyes of the Lord. I mean, that's all the proof we need right there. But let's get one more account from the Dead Sea Scrolls. Just to prove that this scenario was going on. This is a, a testament uh, a, a letter found, or a document found in the Dead Sea Scrolls, attributed to Lamech, the father of Noah. Or, I'm sorry, he's not the father of Noah, but this is, uh, this is the testament that we want. Yeah, you what? No. Yeah, you what? Let me just read it. I'm getting myself all confused trying to talk and read at the same time. Where do I want to start? Because he has this dream. Okay. I'm just going to read from the beginning, and we'll try to get this done in about three minutes here. The Testament of Lamech is found in Q or 1Q20, which is commonly called the Genesis Apocryphon. It is a fragment, it's fragmented, but reproduced here. Enoch tells this same story in his testament, which is found in chapter 106 and 107 of the Ethiopic book of Enoch, also reproduced here. The Dead Sea Scroll is as follows. So you can get confirmation of the story by going to the book of Enoch, which is in the Ethiopic Bible, which is the copies that we have now, which is identical to the copies we found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. So this might sound fragmented because there's some words missing, okay? But you'll be able to get the gist of the story. And all of us from, so each way we may consent in this adulterous act, all that you will, you will amplify anger and it will be unstoppable. For who is there? Who in the heat of anger? The simple and humble to the lowly shake and tremble. We are now imprisoned to cease from your anger, by your anger, since we will leave the house of the great Holy One. Now your hand is ready to strike to destroy us all, because he ceased speaking when we were imprisoned. A fire that has appeared before the Lord of heaven, 
and attacking from behind, and no longer seek grace and mercy from the Lord of eternity before the Lord of eternity. Column 1. Descended, and with women, and the mystery of iniquity that, times, and the mystery that we did not reveal, not until the day, the mystery whether they are all your sons, or great witchcraft, sorcery, and divinations, the earth. And I will begin part of the deed up till now, which is upon dry ground to establish. See, I have given all of them, and if those who strike against their strong bond from all flesh is cursed, the Lord who sent messengers to you to the earth to descend to strengthen his people, teach what you do, men of the earth. He did not to them only, but all flesh. So kind of hard to follow, but the fragment we're getting ready to read now, column two, is much more clear. It suddenly occurred to me that the conception should be, could be from the watchers or the seed from holy ones or Nephilim. My mind wavered concerning the baby. Then I, Lamech, was so upset I became, I came to Bashanosh, my wife, and said to her, I swear by the Most High, the Mighty Lord, the King of all ages, one of the sons of heaven, so you must tell me the whole truth to me, no matter. You have to be truthful to recount it for me. No lies. Will you give birth to the son that is unique? Then Betanash, my wife, started crying and pleading with me. She said, My brother, my husband, you have remembered the time of our love, my pleasure, the heat of the moment, and my panting breath. I swear that I have told you everything truthfully. What's going on here? For some reason, Lamech thinks that the baby that she's about to bear could be of Nephil, could be a Nephilim. Okay, and so this is what he's freaking out about. Why is he freaking out about it? Because this sort of thing happened, and he had a dream. Of course, his wife is like, "Uh, you remember, right? You remember the action that took place? That's how I got pregnant." You know, she's like, "You're being ridiculous." She says, "I swear, I've told you everything truthfully." But I did not believe her. When Bassanash, my wife, saw that my demeanor had changed to anger, she calmed down and said to me, My husband, my brother, my pleasure, I swear to you by the great Holy One, the King of Heaven, that this baby is yours, yours. You are the Father. I have not slept with any stranger, watcher, nor son of Heaven. Why do I see sadness in your eyes and your doubt on your face when I tell you the truth? Then I Lamach ran to Methuselah, my father, and told him, and asked him to ask his father Enoch what the dream actually means, because he knows the watchers well, and God makes everything known to him. Methuselah, my father, understood the importance of the dream and went to Enoch, his father, in the land of Paravan, which is called the ends of the earth, to find out the truth. He said to Enoch, his father, My father and my lord, I have come to you, do not be angry that I come here to seek you. Column 3. For in the days of Jared my father were the sons of heaven dwelt, human houses and upon over the earth, from my land to sea. He will place all of it as one fruit. He called his people. Now go, truth, sorry, it's fragmented here. Truthfully, without lies, reaches by the way of spring. He is the one who will divide the entire earth with. He made sure Methuselah, his son, understood to him that in every sea the Lord will give him an everlasting name from her womb. So Lamech, the father of Noah, he's worried that Noah's going to be some weird, you know, uh, offspring of the Watchers. I'm not going to read the rest of it. There's actually a, uh, I have an episode, go look it up testimony, the testi ancient testaments of the patriarchs. I read the whole thing. I'm running out of time here, so I'm just going to sum it up. Basically, he has a dream, and Noah has these bright eyes and everything, and he thinks but it must be from the Watchers. But really, it was a dream just to let him know that Noah was going to be extremely important and extremely special. Now, the reason I read that is just to add more confirmation that this thing that we've read out of like five sources this morning did take, pla did take place. And even Lamech was wondering, after he had that dream, could, it be, could even my own wife have been corrupted by this? That is the end of the broadcast for today because I'm out of time. 
I mean, this is stuff that we can research and talk about forever because there's endless information. I've done podcasts. Again, you can go look them up just talking about all the giant skeletons dug up in the United States and all the newspaper articles that were written in the 30s about it, in the 20s, and then the 40s, <laughs> in the early 1900s, where they were like just casually reporting, oh, we dug up a 15-foot skeleton. This is no joke, friends. You are, you, if it feels like you're living in the twilight zone, it's because you are. These are the strangest times. The strangest times since the days of Noah. I hope you've been blessed by this podcast. Thanks for listening, friends. Peace and grace be with all of you. And until next time, God bless. <laughs>